Hey, good afternoon, good morning. Today we are talking about MGD and how it's ruining your life and what you should do about it. Hey, I'm Dr. Michael Nelson, YouTube eye doctor, and meibomian gland dysfunction, otherwise known as MGD, is the number one cause of dry eye disease. And the root of the problem is that the meibomian gland is not producing a good quality lipid layer, and so you get dry eye. Okay, so let's take a look at some healthy and unhealthy meibomian glands. So there are meibomian glands in the upper and lower lids, and we can look at these glands by flipping over the lids, and we can use a special camera to highlight these glands. Healthy meibomian glands should be very long and straight, but if someone has MGD, these glands can start to atrophy and shorten and disappear. The bad news is we don't know how to restore the lost glands, but there are ways to get the glands that you have left more healthy and working properly so those don't start to atrophy and things don't get worse. So if you think you have dry eye, before you go to your optometrist, you might want to check if they have a technology called malbography, which is basically the technology that allows us to image and look at the quality of the malbomian glands in your lids. So there are four things that are either causing or controlling contributing to the malbomian glands not working properly and leading to your dry eye disease. And sometimes we use the acronym LION, L-I-O-N, to help us remember what these are. So L stands for lids. And so normally we have bacteria that lives on our skin, and that's called our normal skin flora. And so there are particular organisms and bacteria that live around their lids and our lashes, and they're supposed to be there and they need to be there, and they help keep a healthy environment for our eyelids and keep other worse bacteria away. But in some individuals, the environment of your lids can be so perfect that that bacteria thrives more than it needs to. It could be your pH or chemistry or temperature of your eyelids, but for whatever reason, that bacteria loves your lids and you get more of them than you need to. And when you get more of them than you need to, then what they do is they produce extra waste products that accumulate around the lids and the lid margin, otherwise known as poop, and these waste products can cause inflammation to the lids, causing your lids to become inflamed and red and irritated, but those waste products can also fall into your tear layer and disrupt the tear layer, causing your tears to evaporate off faster, and it can also get into the malbomian glands and cause inflammation into the glands. And so this whole condition where you have more of this bacteria than you need is called blepharitis. And so when you go to see your optometrist, you wanna ask them, do I have any signs of blepharitis? And if you do, they'll give you some options that can treat that. So I stands for inflammation. So when the malbomian glands in the lids start to become inflamed, they're not gonna produce as good a quality malbome from those glands. Now, inflammation is gonna be caused by a lot of things, but one common thing that it can cause it are small abnormal blood vessels that go, grow around those malbomian glands, and that's called telangiectasia. And telangiectasia is a pretty common type of condition that occurs for a number of different reasons. It can occur due to age, things like rosacea, sun exposure, but all of these can create these small abnormal blood vessels that will lead to inflammation of the malbomian gland. So the other thing your eye doctor is gonna be looking for are signs of inflammation or particularly telangiectasia around your lids or your lid margin that might be causing that inflammation. All right, so O stands for obstruction. Now in some people, the oils in the malbomian gland start to become thick and they, they don't flow as well from that gland. And when that happens, those oils start to stagnate and then they start to block that gland. And so when that happens, it can cause the gland not to produce as many oils, but it can also cause atrophy and death of that malbomian gland. And so we have a number of different ways that can be used to unblock and unclog these malbomian glands to get them flowing better, producing a better quality tear, and get them healthy again. And N stands for nutrition. So what we do know is studies show that omega-3s added to our diet can reduce the inflammation in the malbomian glands and help, help treat your dry eye disease. However, as with most nutritional products out there, there's a wide variety of different products. And so in order to treat the inflammation to the malbomian glands with omega-3s, you need the right type and the right quantity of omega-3s to treat that. If you don't have the right type and the right quantity, you're probably better off not taking any omega-3s at all. When you visit your eye doctor, ask them what they would recommend as omega-3s and what dosage and what type that you should be using to treat your eye, dry eye. Now, if you want some of the specific at-home treatments that I recommend for my patients to treat the lids, inflammation, obstruction, and nutrition, then you should watch this video right here. And with that, have a great optometry day.